Hey YouTube, thanks for visiting. In this video, we're going to look at something called the first derivative test. Let's just do an example and I'll explain it through a very, very simple example. So a really easy problem just to explain the concept. So we have a function f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 2. And the question is to find all relative extrema and also find the intervals where the function is increasing slash decreasing, increasing or decreasing, or both. So to find the extrema, we're going to use something called the first derivative test. So the first derivative test basically says the following. If your first derivative changes sign at a critical number, you're going to have a relative maximum or a relative minimum. So for example, even before we do the problem, say we have critical numbers of 2 and 4 and 6. These are all critical numbers, okay? So they're not vertical asymptotes or anything. They're critical numbers. So these are numbers in the domain of the function where the derivative is 0 or undefined. And say you draw your little sign diagram for your increasing, decreasing, and it looks like this. So that means the function here would be increasing, 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 and then all of a sudden starts decreasing. Decreasing, decreasing, and increasing, increasing, and it increases forever. So here, you have a little hump, right? It goes from increasing to decreasing, increasing to decreasing, increasing to decreasing. You have a relative maximum at two. Here, it goes from decreasing to increasing, right? So, uh, so you have a relative minimum at four. And then here, it keeps going, so you have nothing interesting going on at six. So if you have a hump like that, that means you have a max. If you have a dip like that, that means you have a min. That's called the first derivative test. But that has to happen at a critical number. So if this happens at a vertical asymptote, game over. It's not a max or a min. And if you think it is and you actually try to find it, it won't work because your function will be undefined there. So it takes care of itself. So if the derivative changes sign at a critical number, you'll have a relative max or a min. So let's go ahead and do... Um, some problems, right? Some problems. So let's um, let's do this one. So we'll start by taking the derivative. Right? Let's take the derivative. So the derivative here is x squared of x squared is two x. The derivative here is minus eight. So whenever you're doing these problems, the first step is you take the derivative and you ask yourself, is it undefined anywhere? Are there any vertical asymptotes? Well, this is not undefined anywhere, so life is good. So we're good. Then you set it equal to zero. I'm going to write it again. I don't like messing with my derivative. We're going to use this for test points later. So I always rewrite it again down here when I'm, when I'm solving for x. I don't want to do like plus 8, plus 8. I don't want to like taint it. Because we're going to use it later to plug in test points. So you solve this for x. So you add 8. Divide by 2. So you end up with x equals 4. This is a point of interest. It also happens to be a critical number, right? This number is in the domain of the original function and it is a number where the first derivative is zero, therefore it is a critical number. Remember, critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the function where the derivative is zero or where it's undefined. Anyways, in this problem, you take the derivative, look for any places where it's undefined, even vertical asymptotes. No issues, set it equal to zero, you solve. Then you take this number and you put it on a number line. Right? Then you pick test points. You can pick any number in the world smaller than four and any number in the world bigger than four. Let's pick zero, because zero is less than four, and you plug the test points into your first derivative. So f prime of 0. So 2 times 0 minus 8. So 2 times 0 minus 8. So that's going to be minus 8. That's less than 0. That means our function is decreasing. Remember, negative derivative decreasing, positive derivative increasing. Now we have to pick a number bigger than 4. Let's do like, I don't know, 5. f prime of 5. That would be 2 times 5. So 2 times 5 minus 8. So 10 minus 8 is 2. So it's positive. So here the function is increasing. So remember, negative first derivative decreasing, positive first derivative increasing. So the function goes from decreasing to increasing. 4 is a critical number. So we have a relative minimum at x equals 4. So that's the first derivative test, right? So rel, we have a rel min at x equals 4. To actually find the value of the relative minimum, you have to go back to the original function, right? So you, you go back to the OG function. So go back to the OG func. Go back to the OG func. Func means function. So go back to the OG func, right? Take 4 and plug it back into the OG function. So f of 4, f of 4, 
uh, is going to be 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 2. I don't mess up. So 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 2. Yes, that, that is correct. 16. 16. 4 times 8 is 32. So 32 plus 2. So we get negative 16 plus 2. Negative 16, I'm going to write it, I'm going to write it. Negative 16 plus 2 is negative 14. That, that my friends, is the relative, is the relative min. Okay, I had to look, relative min, relative min. That's the relative min. So negative 14 is the relative min. It's the smallest y value relative to the points around it. Now, if, if you're taking like a math class or something, or you're looking at a math book, um, or you're doing a problem or something, usually, usually people don't just, don't just put negative 14. A lot of like uh, people put the ordered pair. So the ordered pair here would be would be four comma negative fourteen. That's where the relative min occurs. Keep in mind the actual relative minimum is is negative fourteen. So for us to say that's the relative minimum is technically incorrect, right? Relative minimums aren't ordered pairs. No, no, no. They're y values that are smaller relative to the points around them. They're also called local minimums, by the way. So local minimum, relative minimum. They're all the same. So a recap, we have this problem. We have to find all relative extrema. We have to find where the function is increasing and decreasing. We're using something called the first derivative test. First thing you do is you take the derivative and look to see if it's undefined. Is it undefined? No, no, it's not. Things are good. Then you set it equal to zero. You solve, you get four. Four happens to be a critical number because it's in the domain of the original function. Remember, critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the function where the derivative is zero or where the derivative is undefined, right? So we take four, we put it on a number line. Pick test points. Pick any points you want, right? We pick zero and five. Plug in zero to the first derivative. Super key. Plug it into the first derivative. We got a negative number. That means it's decreasing. Plug it five into the, where we do that over here, into the first derivative. We got a positive number, so it's increasing. So decreasing to increasing. And it's a critical number, so we have a relative minimum at x equals 4. Then we took x equals 4, we went back to the OG func, func means function, went back to the original function, plugged it in, and we got negative 14. Negative 14 is the relative minimum. And keep in mind, some people like to write the ordered pair. That would be 4 comma negative 14. Thanks for visiting my YouTube channel. I hope this video uh, has helped you even just a little bit. Um, thanks for stopping by. That's it.